Hi guys, it is a spectacularly gorgeous, over the top beautiful day here in paradise. Possibly my last day in paradise in Chulha, Mexico here on this gorgeous Monday evening. February 20th, 2023, which I think is President's Day. President's Day, so uh, I've been thinking about... Uh, President Jimmy Carter, who uh, looks like will be around for a few more days to weeks, so sometime in the next couple of weeks, the 98-year-old Jimmy Carter, my fellow uh, Georgia boy, Jimmy Carter is going to wink out. Uh, this was his last President's Day to... Uh, celebrate. So let's drink a margarita to Jimmy Carter. I don't think Jimmy was a drinking man. But anyway, this is not a, a going to be a rant about. I'm not going to be smirched the name of Jimmy Carter. Someday I might. Someday I need to tell the tale of the Carter Center in Atlanta. Uh, but I'm not going to be smirch the name of Jimmy Carter on his deathbed, but it is a good story about that fucking bullshit that motherfucker pulled uh, about making the Carter Center uh, in Atlanta, Georgia. But anyway, that's another rant for another day. And I also want to let you know my battery light is blinking and this camera might collapse. Uh, this is not a rant about uh, Jimmy Carter. It's actually a uh, just in thinking about my mama. My mama always said, so I guess we will know. So it took, <laughs> good God, she said back in 1980 when uh, Ronald Reagan trounced Jimmy Carter uh, and started the Reagan years. Uh, my, my mother's, uh, <laughs> her comment on that was that history will vindicate Jimmy Carter. So what my, my mama had to say about Jimmy, history will vindicate Jimmy Carter. Uh, so we shall see if my mama is right once again. I've been waiting since January of 1980 for Jimmy Carter to die to see if my mama was on target once again. And I do think my mama's right. I do think you're going to see a lot of vindication for Jimmy Carter coming up in, uh, especially in the lefty press. Be interesting to see if Fox News trash talks Jimmy Carter. Uh, but anyway, we will soon see whether history vindicates Jimmy Carter and whether my mama was right one more time, but as long as I'm thinking about my mama and this battery hasn't crashed, uh, I just kind of want, I, I have all of these scattered videos of some of, you know, my mama's words of wisdom that uh, I was raised by, so I'm just going to encapsulate a few of them. Uh, enjoying this beautiful sunset and this drink. My mama would absolutely have loved Chula, Mexico. She would be sitting here drinking her bourbon and Coke is what she would be drinking. One of the things, my one of the great compliments my mama ever had for me <clears throat> whenever she came to visit and I poured the drinks and she said and she told me, she goes, you know, she goes, out of my five kids, she goes, I know whenever I come to visit Sam that he, he, that I'm going to get a strong drink poured. She uh, <laughs> she was very complimentary on, on how heavy-handed I was with the liquor. So uh, that is a, an excellent compliment from your mother uh, that out of her five children that I pour the strongest drink. 
I'm glad to be appreciated for one of my talents. So I was mentioning a couple of days ago uh, which one was I mentioning? I can't remember. I was talking about one of my mama's uh, one of my mama's sayings. Which one was it? Oh God! I was maybe it's this strong drink. Which which one of my mama's sayings was I just talking about a couple of days ago? Uh. It's not no good deed goes unpunished. We'll talk about that in a minute. It's, oh, it's, uh, it's not <clears throat> where you are, but who you're with was one of her, uh, <clears throat> you know, as I mentioned, you know, whenever I was running around looking for the newest place to find my happiness, which my mama endured over and over again, her youngest son, thinking that he was going to move somewhere and find paradise and find his happiness. And, uh, you know, that was one of her, her sayings. It's not where you are, it is who you're with that she instilled and tried to instill into my head. She failed, you know, which is why, as I said, I once again, I am sitting here alone uh, in this gorgeous paradise, having a delicious, strong drink in some beautiful slice of paradise, sitting here alone. Uh, <laughs> alone in the... Uh, Bored shitless and depressed and wondering why I'm lonely and bored shitless and depressed sitting here in this piece of paradise. But she also had a flip side. You know, my mama liked to balance out her statements. The other kind of a corollary to that statement uh, was, and this one... I usually got to hear, you know, when when I was trying to get a certain female to, you know, be my, uh, well, it didn't used to be my doomer chick forever, but you know, my, my mama, she suffered a lot, as you can imagine, uh, starting at about age 12, when I would get a crush on this woman whatever, uh, whoever uh, it was, my, uh, so I would get this completely uh, unrealistic crush uh, on some girl who had absolutely uh, no interest in being my girlfriend. And I would uh, imagine this recurring theme. Uh, looking for my, well, not so much my doomer chick forever, but, you know, but I would find my Dulcinea, whatever my 12-year-old version of Dulcinea was, or whatever, you know, and I would be whining to my mother that, uh, why can't, uh, this woman understand that she is the woman for me? And, uh, how if I could just get this Dulcinea uh, in, in my life, how my life would be revolutionized. <laughs> and I, I would, she would come out with the old speech, uh, if you base your happiness on the decision of somebody else, you are setting yourself up for a life of misery that uh, if you put your happiness in the hands of somebody else making a decision about what they want to do with their life, that your life is not going to be complete till whatever woman it is, uh, good God, uh, I, could, I could hear my mama right now, uh, me whining to her about Maggie, for God's sake. 
uh, for the past four fucking years. Y y y y you know, but I know what she would have said about Dulcinea. Well, I mean, other than the fact that she's obviously a mentally disturbed, uh, borderline personality, paranoid schizophrenic who needs to be on medication for the rest of her life. You know, my mother was a was a shrink who strongly believed in psychiatric medicine. So after telling me that, uh, you know, she would have said about Dulcinea, a, you know, uh, Sam, if you are, if you are basing your happiness on this woman uh, making, you know, making her decision to be with you, and you've made up your mind that you're going to be miserable if she doesn't decide that she wants to be with you, uh, you are going to be fucking miserable. That uh, it is a dangerous fucking game to play. Uh, I mean, these, these aren't, you know, like original profound concepts. It's just my, my mother was, uh, you know... She had a lot of fucking common sense, and um, and it's true, and I and I fully understand this, and this has been a you know a recurring theme in my life, uh, usually involving women uh, that I want them to decide that they need me in their life to make them happy, I guess. Uh, I think that's called codependency. When someone like me finds someone like me, it's called codependency when you have two people <laughs> thinking the other person uh, is, is going to fill this God-sized hole in their heart. There is one person who can fill the God-sized hole in your heart, and it ain't God, and it ain't, uh, and it ain't some woman or some man or some boss or whatever. It, it's, uh, it, you know, there's one person who can fill a God-sized hole in your heart. But uh, that doesn't change the fact that uh, to this day, if Dulcinea were to walk up right now and say she wanted to be my doomer chick forever. Uh, so what are some others? Uh, of course, uh, the main one I've had is, uh, <laughs> which uh, she didn't get to use it on me quite as much as it's not where you are, it's who you're with. And uh, about if you base your happiness on the decision of someone else, you're setting yourself up for a life of misery. But it was the no good deed goes unpunished. Where time after time, uh, I would come whining to her that uh, all I was trying to do was do a favor for someone. I was trying to do a good deed. And usually, my guess is 80% of the time, it was doing a good deed, a favor for a female friend. I, I don't know why. I, I have a much easier time saying no to my male buddies than I do my female buddies. I don't know what this... Uh, lack of character is. So it was usually where I had done a favor for a female friend, but not always. And and then something had blown up. There had been some fucking misunderstanding and uh, some fucking drama erupted and blah the fuck blah. And, and, and I ended up getting fucked or whatever. I'm not going to mention any of my recent female friends that I did a <laughs> that I 
offer to do a favor for. <clears throat> but anyway, uh, she would say, you know, no good deed goes unpunished. That was that, that might have been her number one favorite. But she had a flip side to that one as well. And that is, if you do someone a favor, do it right. That uh, the, the, the bottom line is, is don't do favors for people. If you do offer to do someone a favor, do it right. Don't offer to do someone a favor and, and, and then do a shoddy job of the favor or you're going to greatly uh, uh, up your chances of no good deed goes unpunished. So I guess the bottom line is don't do anyone any favors. Never a favorer or... She never, she didn't live by that never borrower or lender be. She was, uh, she was okay with borrowing and lending. Uh, oh, as long as I talk about my ex-wife. Now, I have to admit my dear sweet ex-wife was not my mother's favorite person. Uh... She tried to hide it, not very successfully. She never cared uh, for my dear sweet ex-wife. She had actually pretty much fallen in love with a previous girlfriend of mine that she wanted me to marry and was horrified when I dumped this woman uh, right about the time uh, Ronald Reagan was elected. Um... Uh, no, she never cared for Caroline, but I will say after the infamous ham sandwich uh, debacle, you know, that ended my seven-year marriage over, talk about angry women, that's another rant, the angry women rant. Uh, so after the ham sandwich debacle, you know, I went to, you know, we had $112,000 in the bank. And so I went to the bank in Sweet Home, Oregon, and I asked, that I, I honestly did not even know whether it was a, that I needed Caroline's signature to take any money out of the bank. Uh, so we had $112,000 here, so I go up to the lady in the bank and ask, if I could take out $56,000 out of that bank account. And she told me, Mr. Mitchell, you can take $112,000 out of this bank account if you want to. And I said, oh, really? I said, so I don't need Caroline's signature to close this bank account? And she goes, no. Uh, and, and I said, and on the flip side, uh, Caroline could come in here and close this bank account uh, in 10 minutes from now. Uh, and she agreed that was true too. So I honestly, I probably spent about 30 seconds, <laughs> oh God, thinking about that. But I took my $56,000 and left Caroline her 56,000. So anyway, I was telling my mother that story about uh, uh, that I uh, about the bank, and she told me. I mean, not kidding. And, and she, as I say, she was no friend of Caroline's. She didn't care for the woman. She told my brother uh, one time that uh, Caroline does not know what she has in Sam. And my brother told my mother. Caroline knows exactly what she has <laughs> in Sam. But anyway, uh, my mother didn't, even though she didn't care about that, my mother uh, told me that if I had taken that $112,000 out of that account and had fucked Caroline out of that $56,000, she goes, I never would have spoken to you again. And she totally meant it. She would not have.
if I had taken that fifty-six thousand uh, dollars, she would never have spoken to me again. Uh, that was part of her. That's not the son I raised. When <laughs> when I would tell her some story that I colored outside her lines that she raised me with, she would. That was another one of her sayings. That's not the son I raised. You know, that was usually for some minor infraction. But the $56,000, that would have gotten me written out. Uh, so anyway, well, this camera is still running. I think I have just enough daylight. Well, I've told this story before, but I'm just going to close this with this one. You know, so I was the bottom of five kids. So by the time I came along, my mother had already gone through the bullshit of raising four teenagers. So, uh, you know, right about the time I reached puberty and started getting rebellious and getting in all kinds of trouble in school and the fucking... Uh, assistant principal was calling her and complaining about me and shit. Uh, my dear sweet mama, <clears throat> she uh, decided to have a talk with me 50 years ago. Maybe 51 years ago, but we'll call it 50 years ago. Uh, and, and she laid down the law of the house when I was 12 or 13. And uh, she, she told me that there were three rules, three rules that she had in that house for her fifth child. I was the fourth son and the fifth child. Well, she he goes, there are three rules in this house. Uh, <laughs> and I just kind of laughed and I said, exactly what are those three rules? And she goes... Number one, you stay out of jail. Number two, you stay out of the hospital. Number three, you keep me out of the rest of your bullshit. Now that was at least 50, if not 51 years ago. I am now 63 years old. So I agreed to those three rules. I would stay out of jail, <laughs> I would stay out of the hospital, and I would keep her out of the rest of my bullshit. And uh, so how many how many uh, days and nights has Hamlin Littletail spent in jail since the day he was born? If the answer if your answer to that question is zero, give yourself and my mama a gold star. Ask yourself the question, how many days or nights has Hambun Little Tail spent in the hospital since the day he was born? If your answer to that question is zero, give yourself and my mama a gold star. And I think I did a pretty good job of keeping her out of the rest of my bullshit. Uh... Although she had to bring out the no good deed goes unpunished. The uh, it's not where you are, it's who you're with. And uh, if you base your happiness on the decisions of another person, you're guaranteeing yourself a life of misery. Uh, other than having to remind me of those maxims, I did a pretty good job of keeping that woman out of the rest of my bullshit. Oh yes, and she did say my alien abduction was going to turn out to be brain chemistry. And uh, anyone who has ever read DMT, the spirit molecule, knows that once again my mama was right, so now it will remain to be seen whether uh, 
uh, history will vindicate Jimmy Carter. So I'm going to finish off this margarita and uh, as the goddamn music cranks up from across the lake, we're going to watch this beautiful little sailboat come by and uh, think about Elaine Mitchell. R.I.P. How old would my mama be? My mama would be 102 years old, so she was four years older than Jimmy Carter. She would absolutely, one of her favorite things in the world was to be sitting in places like this, drinking a strong drink and watching sailboats go by. Uh, we're going to say this sailboat coming by at sunset is my mama floating by. Yep. I hope your own mama was as cool as mine. Elaine Mitchell, R.I.P. Bye, guys.